Hey everybody, RaspyGA. Um, today, by uh, request, I'm going to go over a topic that I talked about a little bit in my Black Skull Tactical Applications video, um, which is the zero of a gun and the benefits of a 50 meter, 200 meter zero versus the more conventional 25 meter, 300 meter zero. All right, so before we get into that, we need to talk briefly about what we're doing when we are zeroing a gun. Uh, ballistics can get way above my head really quick, um, so I'll try to try to simplify it a little bit. Um, so let's talk about that real quick. All right, let's say this pin represents the bore of a rifle. All right, let's say for the sake of argument that it is completely horizontal. Um, when the gun is fired and the bullet exits the barrel, the bullet will continue on in a flat path until the bullet slows and gravity takes effect it eventually pulls the bullet down to the uh, surface of the earth. All right, that's the way that, uh, that bullets work. They don't, uh, they don't come out of your barrel and, and rise or anything like that. Um, if, your, if your bore is, is, is completely horizontal, the bullet will come out completely horizontal and gradually fall to the earth. Um, there's a lot of things that affect that uh, elevation, the air density, um, the weight of the bullet, the velocity that it's moving at, lots of stuff. But just to simplify it, your bullet's going to come out flat and it's going to start falling. All right, well now when we zero a gun and we put an optic on it, for example, um, or we're using the iron sights, it's two different planes, all right? You have your bore, and then you have the plane um, of the optic or of your uh, iron sights, okay? And if the two are completely um, parallel with one another, on an AR you will typically see a two to two and a half inch um, offset between where your dot is on the target and where your bullet impact is at close distance. Um, and if you maintain a completely parallel alignment with the, the optic and your bore, uh, your bullet would progressively drop further. So your, your point of aim would always be constant and your point of impact would consistently get lower and lower and lower down the target uh, in relation to the distance that the target was from the bore of the gun. So when we zero a gun for a given distance, um, what we're trying to do is keep this optic on a horizontal plane uh, so our point of aim is, is consistent. And we're essentially adjusting it in such a way that when we hold it the rifle and we uh, center up that, that optic on the target, the bore is no longer horizontal. The bore is actually canned up slightly. Now this is a gross exaggeration um, for, the, for the purpose of making the point. Uh, but what we're trying to do in effect is, is arc the bullet. Okay? So that somewhere between that arc, between two given points at a distance, there's more usable points of uh, impact uh, in, in, in that arc so that uh, aiming is, is simpler, okay? Um, so that, that's essentially what we're doing is, is we are adjusting it um, to where that arc is more usable for us. Okay, so for a 25 meter and 300 meter zero, what's that saying? Um, well, it, it's saying that the, the bullet is, ang uh, the barrel, the bore is angled up in such a way in relation to the optic that at 25 meters, um, your point of aim and your point of impact, they are going to intersect, okay? The top being your point of aim, the bottom being your point of impact, it's gonna travel up and they're gonna intersect at 25 meters, all right? And then the bullet is gonna continue going up or being arced up above your point of aim, and when it starts coming back down, those two points are gonna intersect again around 300 meters, okay? So that is uh, essentially what you're doing there. For a 50, 200 meter zero, um, what we're looking at is a uh, your 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 point of aim and your point of impact are going to intersect at 50 meters. The uh, the path of the bullet is going to continue arcing up, and they're going to intersect again at around uh, 200 meters. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to grab a prop real quick that I'll use to demonstrate the pros of the 50, 200 versus the 25-300, okay? So you guys hang on for just a second. 
All right, guys, so I went ahead and I marked up one of my shirts here to make an example. Um, all these measurements are done uh, using ballistic charts for a, a 62 grain M855, the uh, green tip steel core penetrator coming out of a uh, M4 barrel, which is 14.5 inches. Now, my personal gun is a, uh, is a 16 inch barrel. Um, so it would be a little bit different, uh, but not, not to the extreme. There would also be a, a shift in point of, in point of impact if you were using a, uh, a different weight bullet, like a 55 grain or a real heavy bullet, um, like, a, uh, like a 75 grain or something like that. Also, if you have different, tw different uh, twist rates in your barrels, it may affect it. Um, my gun runs a one and seven inch twist, uh, just like the, uh, the M4 does. But it's still going to be pretty close. So let's go over an example here. This is a uh, illustration of a 50 meter zero right here. Okay, and on your 50 meter zero, your point of aim and your point of impact, 50 meters, are going to be identical, as indicated by this red dot right here. Okay. Um, now, when you shoot at 25 meters, your point of aim is still going to be the red dot right here, 50 meters. Your point of impact is going to be a little bit low. It's going to be about 1.3 inches low. Okay. Um, then when we uh, we move back again, 50 meters point of aim, point of impact is identical. At 100 meters, we are right here, um, approximately 1.7 inches above the uh, point of aim at 50 meters. Um, and then when we get out to 150 meters, we're approximately 1.8 inches above point of aim. All right, we drop back down to 200 meters, and our point of impact is approximately 0.2 inches um, above point of aim. And then we get down to 250 meters down here, and our point of impact is approximately 3.7 inches below the point of aim. Okay, so we still have this extreme spread of seven, seven and a half inches, somewhere around there, um, that is that is usable, and that's going off of a relative center mass point of aim hold for all those shots. All right, so if I hold right here, my shots are still going to hit somewhere in here. But based on your ammo, your barrel, your shooting uh, fundamentals, and things like that, as the distances increase, um, your effective group will get slightly larger. And then as you get closer distances, your group theoretically should be a little bit smaller. So you take that into account, okay? Um, but this is where if it was, if you're running out of a vice and you were in a vacuum and you didn't have to worry about any uh, adverse wind effects or anything, this is essentially where your bullets would hit. And again, okay. let's look at it a little bit closer. Right here, 50 meters, we have point of aim, point of impact, 25 meters. We're going to be about 1.3 inches low. <clears throat> Again, 50 meters, point of aim, point of impact. At 100 meters, we're going to be about 1.7 inches high. At 150 meters, we're going to be about 1.8 inches high. At 200 meters, we're going to be about 0.2 inches high. And then at 250 meters, we're going to be about 3.7 inches <clears throat> low. Okay, so again, that's the uh, the spread right there. All right, and this is again the uh, the 50 meter slash 200 meter zero. And this is where your effective area would be. And beyond 250 meters, you just start holding high because your bullet's going to consistently hit lower. Um, you can see the arc that I was describing earlier reflected here. Um, because at 25 meters, there's a, uh, an offset difference. The bullet arc has not yet met up with point of aim. At 50 meters, it meets point of aim. The bullet continues in its upward arc at 100 meters. And then again at 150 meters. It starts coming back down at a more rapid rate now. So at 200 meters, it's just slightly elevated over point of aim. And then it continues its downward fall towards the earth. So at 250 meters, we're down here. Okay. Um, let me turn my shirt around and I'll show you what the uh, 300 or the, uh, the 25 300 meter zero looks like. All right guys, here we go. We got the, uh, the 300 meter zero. 
um, illustrated here on this shirt. Uh, I did have to bring my point of aim indicator down, uh, further down on, on my stomach, so that I would be able to get the spread in here, uh, which is kind of the point of this whole charade anyway. Um, so if you would look at my little marker here. Here is uh, 25 meters. All right, 25 meters, we have point of aim, and our point of impact is exactly the same. Again, just like the other one, the red dot is going to illustrate our point of aim for all of these hits. All right? So again, 25 meters, we have point of aim and point of impact. All right, that's going to be identical. Um, when we get up to uh, 50 meters, we are approximately uh, 2.7 inches uh, higher than our point of aim. When we get out to 100 meters, we are approximately 7.2 inches higher than our point of aim. At 150 meters, we are approximately 10.1 inches higher than our point of aim. And when we get out to 200 meters, we are approximately um, 11.3 inches higher than our point of aim. And then 250 meters, we are approximately uh, 10.4 inches higher than our point of aim. And then 300 meters would be back down here somewhere in close relationship to our point of aim. So let's look at that closer. All right, guys, here we go again. We have uh, 25 meters, point of aim and point of impact is the same. At 50 meters, we're coming up approximately 2.7 inches higher than our point of aim. At 100 meters, we are about 7.2 inches higher than our point of aim. At 150 meters, we are approximately 10.1 inches higher than our point of aim. 200 meters, we are about 11.3 inches higher than our point of aim. 250 meters, we are about 10.4 inches higher than our point of aim. And then 300 meters would be somewhere down here around our original point of aim. <clears throat> All right, so you can see the, the spread on this is almost 11 and a half inches. Um, and that's not taking into account any human variable or any variable in the ammunition or anything like that. or uh, variations in the in the weather conditions that we're shooting in. So we just went from about seven inches to, you know, a, a much larger spread. And again, we're not holding the same way uh, that we would be holding um, with, with that I represented with the other zero because I just couldn't get it all in this shirt. If this dot was here, then this, uh, this 200 meter dot right here would be on my forehead uh, or higher. And the head is a, is a much, much smaller target than, than the center mass or a torso hit is. Um, so we're trying to hit torso, so we would have to hold down here to get effective hits. And it, it's, it's pretty counterintuitive when you're trying to engage targets fast to, to get your dot on target and center mass and then have to consciously remember to come and hold down here if you're wanting to get hits. Um, and then your hits won't be in that same vital zone either. Uh, you could be having hits down here in the stomach, um, or you could be having hits up here in the neck or above a lot of your vital organs in your in the center of your chest, um, or even up here on the head as you get further and further away from the target, um, which is a much easier target to uh, to miss. And like I said, uh, in relation to distance, as your distance gets further, your groups go from what should be small and tight to bigger, um, even to the point that... Uh, when you have something this big that has, you know, a variation in there, uh, you could easily just completely miss the uh, the headshot anyway. So um, again, this is the, uh, the 25 meter, 300 meter zero, and uh, I think it's it's pretty evident the uh, the cons against it. All right, guys. So I hope I hope that uh, clarified it up a little bit for you, made it kind of easier to see and appreciate when it's actually displayed. On a uh, on a torso, um, and and you have to figure out 
uh, what it is that you're going to be doing with your rifle. Um, we're shooting beyond or 300 meters and beyond. A, a 25, 300 meter zero is is fine. Um, I'd likely be using that on a, on a, on a rifle um, with a magnified optic, such as an ACOG, uh, which is designed to be zero to 300 meters and um, and run runs a uh, bullet bullet drop compensating reticle in there uh, to to give you the correct holds for distances greater than, than 300 meters. Um, my employment of a, of a fighting rifle is probably not even going to exceed 200 meters. Um, you know, it, in, in, in my line of work or, or even as a civilian, it, it would be kind of hard to justify a, a uh, self-defense shooting at 200 meters. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that there aren't cases where that could happen, uh, but it's just less likely. My primary use for the rifle is going to be in close quarters, indoors, or um, in relative close quarters, uh, out of doors. But it's more likely that I'll be engaging somebody within zero and uh, in 200 meters. God forbid I should ever have to use uh, my rifle that way. Um, and, and for what I'm using my rifle for, the, uh, the 200 meter zero, uh, the 50 meter, 200 meter zero just makes more sense. Um, in my application than what a, uh, a 25 or 300 meter zero. Um, so if you like it, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, please like and subscribe. Uh, you know, like my video, subscribe to my channel. Um, if you guys give me a thumbs down on my video, let me know why so I can change something or, or correct something or something like that. Um, I, I love it when guys give you a thumbs down on your video but they don't leave you a comment. Um, so they're just saying they don't like your video, but they're not giving you a reason. They're not helping you improve um, on the product that you're putting out. So uh, please, if you don't like my video, um, you know, that's that's what opinions are for. Uh, but give me some constructive criticism. Let me know what, you're, what you don't like about my video. Some stuff I might be able to change. Um, my voice, unfortunately, I can't change that for you, but uh, just let me know. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, though. Y'all be good. Be safe and have a good day. Thanks for watching.